Hey, we're live on the internet. Welcome to Sunday night. It's post performance pints. I'm Ali O'Rourke. I put on makeup and a bra, so you better fucking enjoy this show. <laughs> uh, this is post performance pint, the podcast where we try to recreate the green room and have the crack. Uh, we have some wonderful show tonight. Some amazing acts. But first, I'm going to introduce you to your musical guest, the wonderful Stars. How's it going? Uh, this fourth song is called Hell Over Heaven. You can run for miles looking for your savior, but mine's in the bottom of a bottle. You can bet your sins upon bending knee and pray, but I'm gonna smoke the dust I got em. And I'll forget this world and all its words The thing I'm losing is the dirt of the Cause this life is a bad Thanks for that. We'll have more from him later on the show. Thank you. Uh, now, I guess I, should, I suppose I should introduce him tonight. I should introduce my wonderful co host, the wonderful Pedro Guerra. Well, hello over there. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. How are we on? Did, I, did, I, did I manage to say your name right for once? To be fair, I didn't really pay attention when you said my name. I've already, like, my brain already ignores it. Like, there's a blank every time you're like, and Pedro, I'm like, yeah, she said Pedro correctly. <laughs> Actually, even yeah. Pedro, fuck, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> God, it doesn't matter. How, how has your week been, dude? Uh, do, anything interesting? Any nice shopping trips? Anything fun? Oh, I, I traveled all over the world. I did this amazing trip, you know, to Bali, and I was there. Like, I'm joking. I didn't do anything. Um, there's things now you can go on museums online, so people can oh. check that out. So. I saw that, like some nice French music. This, okay, why are we getting? This is like the most <laughs> off brand for us thing ever. We're talking about say, music. Like, you know, like every time I go to a new city, I ignore the museums, but you know, you have to go at least through the door. So right now, I just open the browser, look at it, like, you know what? Not going to go in. So I just did the same thing. Fair, that was the fair, joke. That was a horrible fair. joke. But you know yeah, what? we're going to pretend that didn't happen. Um... We, lost all, we lost everybody who was watching after that joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, will we bring on our guests? Please. Will we bring on bring our guests? Guest. <laughs> our guest tonight is uh, one of the best comedians in Ireland, a uh, true professional, really funny, man of the country, and comedian and actor. Give it up for the wonderful Tom O'Mahony. Hey! Applause, 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 oh, applause. Hey, Tom, how are you? How you doing, Pedro? You all right, bye. That's What's right. happening? Welcome. How has uh, isolation been for you, buddy? This is right up my street. I live in isolation most of the time anyway, to be honest. It's just, <laughs> just the, 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 the popping out for the public to look at me every so often. So this is perfect. <laughs> I live I mean, out the your, your legions of adoring fans have been get Well, actually, no, you have quite a strong fan base. I shouldn't probably joke about it. They'll probably come for me. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> but you have to hide away in the hills of Tipperary to get away from people. I live in I live in Wicklow. I live in the hills of Wicklow. Oh, so wow. about 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 thirty k outside the city centre. So it's it's perfect just to keep people at a at a, at a, a rifle shot range. And, uh, <laughs> uh, keeping going with the bookshop brand right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so what made you this is a weird question to start off but what made you move to Wicklow from Tipperary was Tipperary have you got too good for the good people of Tipperary Ooh. Well, the thing is I don't know I, I, I think maybe it's because I'm still so country people have thought think that I've lived there relatively recent I haven't lived in Tipperary in nearly 20 years what oh yeah like I've been in in Dublin for a long long time in or around the major cities and whatnot but All I've right. never haven't lived there since I was Jesus, yeah, twenty years nearly. That's Most amazing. That's a long reason. Reason time, yeah. <laughs> well, I had you see, I lived in Dublin, and the last place I lived was Portobello, and I was claustrophobic. And also, they wanted to keep my gu- they wanted to take my guns off me because keeping guns in Portobello. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and they have and they have the, the spawns country. there for target practice and all, so it's very enticing to just try it from the. <laughs> To be honest, I tried it with hipsters, but their arses are too narrow. It's, you, can't hit them. you can't hit them. The skinny jeans, like the fucking fastest deer you've ever seen. So I, just, uh, I knew it was time oh to go God. when I could be missing the fuckers. Yeah, yeah, it's like you got oh, yeah. a fixie, so you went to looking for foals. Uh, yeah, now that you mention that, maybe you were the one who was shooting at me a couple of years ago. Now that makes sense. I was like, every I, time I walk I, 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 I shot the ironic belt buckle off your fucking trousers. That was about as good as I got. <laughs> I was going to say, the Game Boy controller from the 90s or something was your bulk buckle. I shot it off by accident. I apologize. <laughs> well, to be honest, it was rubbish. So <laughs> I, I was going to say, you're really uh, reading the room here, having to go with hipsters. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. not so hard. Like, <laughs> Come on. Uh, Come on. Uh, I have a, Huff, yeah. I have a Harry Amish, Potter scar. The Amish, there, beard, right? the Amish beard on Pedro. His real name is fucking Kieran. He called himself Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Just <sound funny. laughs> <laughs> just just really, <laughs> I'm just trying to be more interesting. This is my this is my Tinder profile. That accent is fucking brilliant. Honestly, you must have worked on that for years, have you? Because it's your <laughs> leader, you fucker. I met you in the whale talk. I'm glad you decided to go with Pedro pretending to be Irish and me pretending to be a woman. Let's just be honest. <laughs> We had a podcast together. We got over all of that. I mean, we, we got, we got, we got, we got, we got through it. We got through it. Uh, here's the thing. You're doing a fucking better job than he is. I'm fucking not <laughs> I'm more, like, I, I pass better than Pedro. Is this a roast? Did he come into a roast? What the fuck is, is this? Is what this is, no? <laughs> so I mean, what else would we be doing? Doesn't that mean that we're all friends? Yeah, so that's actually true, just and all of a sudden we hate each other. So I think <laughs> we should just We've gained each other each other's respect. It's time to insult each other. Uh, that's so true. That's actually to be fair, this is what we do after gigs. So this is actually post performance pints. It actually would I'm be a very literal person, Pedro. I took it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not even uh, drinking pints. I feel bad today. I'm drinking tea. I'm so sorry, everybody who's watching this. I'm so sorry. Jesus, was he vegan now as well? Is he? Oh, sorry, Ali. You're, yeah, Jesus, you're you're taking all the box. <laughs> drinking tea as well. I, I brought drink. Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> we had Pedro gave up the drink uh, at one stage during our original run of this podcast, and then we just realized that all three of the original hosts weren't drinking, and we felt like, okay, I guess it's a, we're hipsters yeah. anyway, so I guess it's ironic. Uh, yeah. So I straight, I went straight back to being an alcoholic right after that. I mean, like we gotta, we gotta. <laughs> I do it for the team. Uh, <laughs> no, just I just don't have any booze. I actually drank all of it last Friday night, and I haven't been bothered to go outside fight the zombies and get more more alcohol so i need to do that that's a good complaint that's <laughs> as complaints go that's pretty good now we did bring you here to discuss you believe it or not Tom. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry yeah. i'm trying to pick up the bottle here one second hey what do you think of that for a bottle opener what is that it's a bit blurry is that a man is that a spider oh, oh cool i i 
I mean, this is kind of like fitting in with what's been going on with me. I feel like I've been slowly in cell eyes, been trapped at home. I've started watching way more wrestling than I ever did. And it's, I'm about, I'm about one DDT away from hating all women. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why won't they love me? Uh... <laughs> because your phone is coming. Hey! <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Okay. I'm actually, Andrew, I'm you're from the place that... It's, uh, <laughs> you're oh, from the you, place that Maddie got that? robbed, so you can't talk, okay? Yeah, I am from where Maddie McCann uh, allegedly disappeared. She got robbed in <laughs> Yeah, I'm from the place where she, <laughs> she disappeared. So, I, I love I love the fact that you you're from the place she got robbed and you grew up to grow that beard. Uh, <laughs> because I want to look as different as I look from back then, so they don't really uh, find me. Uh, so uh, all so lost hair, hair, start raising a barn and start growing his own vegetables out in the middle of you know of America somewhere. Because that beard is just get rid of that fluffy mustache, man, and you're going to be oh, Amish all the way. Did you know Amish? Do you know Waterford has an uh, Amish population? No, it I mean, does. It, it does. Apparently, <laughs> like, I, I only found this out like two weeks ago. Waterford has an Amish population. I don't know if anybody's told them what's going on, to be honest. But like, there's, there's like a couple of families of, uh, I say they're Mennonites. So they're like off-brand Amish. So, uh, oh, well, they love riding. Opera. Yeah, the Mennonites just love riding. That's what that is. Like, it's just <laughs> a bunch of pervy blokes who take on fucking a gang of fucking women. Yeah, not that... <laughs> You're crossing them badly with the other ones there. They're more fucking, a bit more Christian. Those fucking are just flat out right. Oh, That's just a load of fucking Waterford fuckers have gotten together and went here. Well, we get tax breaks if we're a fucking religion, will we? And they just got out back fucking somewhere and just started their own fucking, their own religion. We're, we're 12 minutes into this podcast. Five yeah. of them have been somebody playing music and we're already into our own conspiracy theories. Uh. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's something shady about Waterford, to be honest. There's something... Sh- I love Waterford, having said that. I've been there twice. I like it. I've been there twice. I think that means that I like it. I think if you go to a place <laughs> twice... You, 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 don't right. to, you don't have to be tipped the match, Pedro, to keep. <laughs> <laughs> there's currently eight people watching this. It's okay. Uh. I'll tell you one thing, uh, Tom. I, I was actually telling you from Waterford. Exactly, because I, w- I actually was last year, I was supposed to do a gig uh, where you were like headlining in Waterford, which was cancelled. But I only found out it was cancelled when I was already in Waterford. Uh, so that was brilliant. Uh, but at least I got to try uh, the burger pizza. So it's like a pizza with like a burger baked in the middle of the pizza. So the, the, the burger's coming out of the pizza in the middle. This is I have pictures, I'll try to look them up. So this is in Waterford. This is what Waterford does to people. This is a no, thing. I have... And and that's 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 what happens when you're in such isolation for so long. You end up coming with, coming up with fucking pizzas and burgers coming out in the middle of them like that. Oh, I'm gonna make one tomorrow. Happens. I'm gonna make one tomorrow. I'm already halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could. My internet, sorry, no, I, I have to address this. My internet cut out, and I went from Waterford to Burger Pizza, and I don't know what the fuck just happened. Oh, uh, no. It absolutely is in time. It's that insane <laughs> the shit that Pedro's coming out with. Yeah, it's a place. It's a restaurant. No, uh, it's a restaurant in Waterford where they make burger pizzas. I'm going to try to look it up for the picture very quickly, but, you know, we can carry on. We can carry on. Uh, <laughs> okay, I am conscious we <laughs> have to vamp for a minute. Uh, let's... <laughs> this has got weird, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's just shift it up a gear. Will we bring in our uh, first spot feature? New, we have a oh, new yeah. thing this week we're going to do, guys. We are go- We have a new... We- I was chatting with a good friend of ours. Uh, somebody else's name I can't pronounce properly. <laughs> and he's going to give us his knowledge of... Since he's, he's welcome in. Ni Mai. Woo! Hello. Yo, Nia. Bye, bye. Nice to be here. Hi. Hi, how are you? How's okay. isolation going, dude? Oh, um, it's terrible. Um, <laughs> I'm in a studio flat now. Uh, I'm, I'm lonely. Uh, oh, shit. Night. So, I uh, know yeah, everything we see on your camera is your studio. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's basically my, the extent of my room. <laughs> this is, so, you are right now sitting in the oven. And yes. <laughs> I lived in. Studio. And the toilet as well. And the toilet. It's all in. 
What a price like to like when we asked you to come on and like give your cultural learnings of Ireland, we didn't mean of nineties cultural Ireland. Like I didn't think studio <laughs> environments existed anymore, dude. Oh, where, are yeah. you from, where are you from, Myanmar? I'm from Vietnam. Vietnam. You came all the way from Vietnam, and this is what you ended up fucking finding. What is that <laughs> plug plugging into? <laughs> there's a socket, and there's a grey wire oh, plugging is. directly into. Oh, the that's, that's, what is going on? Uh, that, what is, that's, that's a lamp. Uh, that's oh, yeah, okay. Don't go anywhere near that. That is not construction <laughs> regulations. I'm telling you now, stay away from that. <laughs> that no, was... Well, I mean, that's the thing. Uh, I used to live in a much nicer place before this. And then, you know, the landlords, uh, you know, being dicks. Uh, so I had to, they, they sold the place. I had to move here. Oh, you know, and that's my experience of, and that's my experience of the Irish, ha our Irish housing market. You know. Good. Good night. I was going to make a joke about that lamp being illuminating, but I'm glad the conversation moved on from that. Uh, yeah. So why don't you illuminate us further and uh, give us a quick tour of this apartment. <laughs> what is, uh, it's done. It's there you go. Uh, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, that was well, so that, quick. That's a, quick that's a toilet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, there's a shower. Uh, the bed is behind, is behind me. and The kitchen area is on the other side. Uh, yeah. And this is my... Kind of desk in a way. That's that's, that's the whole tour. Cut your foot in a lap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll, hey, Yanma, it'll force you to keep the weight down anyway because you can't get fat in an apartment like that. <laughs> no, it's true. You have to be very flexible. You know. Uh, it's you like are in Dublin, are you? Sorry. You are in Dublin, are you? Uh, I'm in Dublin. Yeah. Um, why choose Dublin uh, in and for populated cities? Um, well, because I'm uh, at Trinity at the moment. Um, so mm -hmm. I and I thought, you know, Dublin would be a good choice. So I went, I decided to go here. We're sorry. Yeah, and on a scale to one to ten, how much do you regret that decision? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, yeah, uh, seven. Yeah, that's. <laughs> wow. wow, that's actually higher than I thought. I thought you were going to go either for the joke, like a 10, or you're going to be like very nice and probably like, ah, four, you know, good in the bad. Jesus. No, this, well, I mean, this uh, what... That's an honest wow. man. <laughs> this well, is what I mean, we asked uh... on, like, because we knew you'd give us a good, honest answer, but like, wow, that was brutal, man. <laughs> Here, do you want to like give us back our heart that you just ripped out? But, anyways, moving on. <laughs> Honest, I'm grand because I'm not from here. So yeah, let's rip it. Let's rip it apart. Yeah, let's make a tag team. Let's yeah. destroy this culture. I'm joking. I love the culture. Are we good? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> also, me and Tom aren't from Dublin, so can we just turn this into a roast of Dublin? Uh, oh, oh yeah, let's yeah, yeah, destroy yeah, yeah. Dublin. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I have uh, no jokes Tom, about Dublin people. <laughs> <laughs> Wise, uh, Tom as. A Tom, as a former civil engineer, how would you rate the structural integrity of Naimai's um, life? Oh, his life. His life is uh, hanging in the balance. Yeah. I, would imagine. <laughs> I would shut it down immediately and fucking cordon off the whole scenario of your life and just hope to just reassess in a couple of months' time. But I would burn it to the fucking ground just for safety. <laughs> That's a very I mean, you already... He already moved to Dublin, so like, there's not much more he can burn. Uh... <laughs> exactly, Jesus. Okay, but yeah, yeah. Tell us a bit more about like what findings you have, like uh, food-wise. I think that's a big one, especially for someone coming from like Vietnam, like where food is well pretty good. And uh, uh, then you have the spice box over here. Yeah, the spice box. I haven't had a spice box yet. Uh, You're a smart man. You had a burger <laughs> pizza. Well, I mean, the thing is that. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, I used to live in Scotland. Uh, oh, Jesus! Honest, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you know they use and they and they deep fry everything in Scotland. You know what I mean? Uh, so You're lucky you, know, you didn't like get relatively. <laughs> no, no. And we're still a seven. I mean, I'm well toned, but <laughs> um, yeah, I never had a. Well, I mean, because they had the deep fried Kit Kat over there and uh, deep fried um, oven mitts and that kind of stuff. So I guess you know, like the Irish on a you know relatively they're on a much more healthier diet than this. Plus oh. they had famine, so they had some uh, waste lots to re regime. 
There you go. <laughs> You're just fucking going straight forward. I like your attitude. You're going roasting. <laughs> straight I mean, no. yeah, Mark, you never make jokes. Here. We can have a fucking chat about that if you want to talk about fucking bad situations in history. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like our people have something in common here. Uh, I'm going to shut the fuck up because I'm from the country that did a lot of bullshit around. So, you know what? I'm going to yeah. withdraw from this conversation. Of historical significance. Uh, how how did Portugal get the fuck away with this, though? To be honest, like we always think of the Portuguese being the sound lads. And, because like, we got, we got cool. really poor. We got really really. I mean, we got fucking horrible poor, and then we have nice beaches, and people are generally nice ah. now that we lost everything. Uh, well, you gotta shout out for oh, right. Sup, <laughs> Rachel. Hey, Pedro. Hey, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, rather than oh, all my Tinder dates not to talk to me on real life, but Jesus Christ, and no, I'm joking. <laughs> Sorry, go, Ellie. I was just gonna say, I had a Batters Mar bar, like this great Scottish staple that it is once in my life, and uh, let's just say it, it's like I, I don't think food should come pre lubed. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that yeah. shit just went like that amount of grease, that thing just went whoop straight through, like it came out yeah. fucking intact. Yeah. Well. Okay, moving on. Now I kicked the shit out of this room. Uh, <laughs> no, um, thanks for joining us. We'll, we'll have a chat with you again later, if that's okay. No, or do, you any, do, do, do you have any? Do you have any? Do you have any? What last closing remarks of what you learned in your time in Ireland? Um, I find out everyone hates RTE here, which is pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty cool, you know. Pretty on the edge. That's really, okay, no, now I can say. Now you're saying for that. Uh, so, Tom, you used to work for RT. Uh... Yes. <laughs> but no, I look. I worked as a contractor, and all my checks cleared. So I, I don't give a fuck what he says. <laughs> no, I was just fascinated. Like you, people, like. You people, people. You people. Oh. <laughs> not, not you people. I mean, like, oh, the wow. country. Oh my <laughs> God! Do you always the same to you? Is that what you're saying? No, wow. no, like you know, like no, like you're gonna go know. straight out the gate and be fucking racist, Pedro. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there putting on his Leicester top like he's trying to be fucking one of Jesus Christ! You know what? You're being passive aggressive. Is what you're being. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Portuguese people are. To be fair, yeah. we're passive aggressive. <laughs> That's why we're good for tourism because you're gonna stay there for a week, so you don't really see the real, the real us. Can you, oh can God! You make every drug legal, Portugal. What? Didn't Portugal make every single drug legal? <laughs> Not every single drug. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, what didn't uh, they make illegal? I think heroin uh, and cocaine. And stuff like, <laughs> like they decriminalize it. So like, if they catch you with like enough for yourself, they just kind of try to take care of you as somebody who's with the disease, like somebody who's sick, right? But of course, if you're selling it, like tra the drug trafficking, then you, you you go to jail. So just saying in case some comedians are thinking about changing careers, uh, <laughs> Portugal is not that great in that. Some but yeah, comedians, but some like, some comedians right now are thinking of changing careers. <laughs> exactly. They're like, I need to, I, no, man, like I'm living in Dublin city center at the moment and for lack of anything else to do, like there's one step near where I live called the heroin step. That's what it's known in the neighborhood. <laughs> and like all of a sudden there was like three, three fucking paddy wagons and two squad cars outside it after a day. Like I've lived here for three years. I've never seen a cop near it. And all of a sudden they're like, ah, oh, shit, lads, what should we do? Like, we have nothing else to be at. Let's go bust that one step that's been the main dealing spot for the last five years. So, I, That's I mean, how you're going to get your to see in, man. You just start dealing some fucking drugs. Nobody yeah. ever exactly. gets to be in these guys' drugs. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll establish like a takeaway. That that is a uh, that is a front for a drug dealing uh, enterprise. You know. So what are you takeaway? studying? In oh yeah. What are you studying in Trinity? I'm doing a master's in uh, international history. All right. So everybody, you now know where to find him. Uh, for all your international <laughs> history. Yeah, just a... That's why you had to dig away from the potato famine. Thank you very much. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, yeah. Hey, hey, hey Pedro, uh, yeah. weren't you once accused of being a drug dealer, or mistaken for a drug dealer? Oh, many. Oh, yeah. No, that was uh, when we were doing the the rickshaw sketch uh, for news check. Uh, 
and uh, I was driving the rickshaw, right, for the being filmed and all that. And three times we got stopped with lads trying to buy drugs off us. And the first time I didn't get it. Like I'm just I'm I'm standing near the rickshaw, and this lad comes with me, like to me, like very very shy, like very shaking, like oh yeah man, like like I don't even understand what he asked. Like he asked if I have something. And I'm looking at him like, why would you ask me this? I'm just a dude in the middle of the street. Then I looked at the rickshaw like, oh, shit, yeah. Oh, yeah, man, no, no. And then I told him we were just filming this. And he's like, oh, shit, is this being filmed? Oh, fuck. Oh, all right. Oh, shit. And then he just runs, just leaves. <laughs> so that was hilarious. Yeah, oh, yeah. The rickshaw lads. The rickshaw lads got really pissed at us. Yeah. Uh, they're A lot of them are Brazilian, and so I can understand what they're saying. And we're walking up Grafton, uh, Grafton Street just to give the rickshaw back. And I listened to these two rickshaw drivers. They they drive past us and they're saying like, who the fuck are those guys? Do you know those guys? Like in Portuguese. And I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. So then they drive back to us and they're talking again in Portuguese. Like, you know, oh, I don't know these fuckers. Okay, let's go talk with this. Let's see what's happening. And then they just change their tone and they're like in English. Hey guys, where you from? what's happening? Are you guys okay? Like, who are you working for? Like, And then we had to be like, oh yeah, man, this is like a... Like a marketing promotion kind of thing, and they're like, "Oh yeah, cool, yeah." We just, you know, because it looks like the rickshaw is a bit damaged. That's all good. Okay, guys, have a nice day, and then just left. So, did yeah, the Brazilians have the 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 part of the market on rickshaws in Dublin, have they? I think so. I mean, I mostly oh, listen yes, to the rickshaw business in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I you mean, know? as a whole sketch <laughs> gatherers, the rickshaw business is really a front, right? Uh, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for selling jokes, what? <laughs> what? What? Hey! Uh, well, in fairness, like I feel like I've just alienated our Brazilian listenership, to which I apologize. Uh, but I feel yeah, like I've just gained, I've gained so many followers in the Dublin Irish taxi driver community right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you probably did. But to be oh, fair, taxi God. drivers also sell drugs, oh, probably. If they could. Oh God! That and racism—they sell that and racism. So and racism, you know, that's racism. So racism. I, I said, I, I, I recently the last time I was in a taxi, it was actually on the way to do uh, a gig for the Sex Workers Alliance of Ireland, which in itself was an experience—a uh, wonderful experience. Please hire me again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, the amount, I mentioned it where I was going to the taxi driver, and the stories I got out of him—it was like. It was like you do realize you're basically working as a pimp. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there was a bunch of girls that would use him. And he was like, thought it was great. And it's like, yeah, you should probably not tell people what you're doing uh-huh. in case they go tell it the story on a podcast. Uh, and now everyone knows. No, I'm joking. Now, now was, we've really beat it. How was the gig? That was one of the strangest gigs I ever did, but it was really fun. Um, and the sex workers being as cool as they are, they they pay well. They do pay well, which was nice. Which is nice. But uh, all, in cash. It, it, all in cash, all not all up front. They they value labor. Sex workers work, yo. Uh, <laughs> lovely ladies. Um, this is. Uh, I feel like I've gone into like this awkward hole. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Straight off, you really have to use that word straight off the back and talk about sex work. Well done. Awkward. What do you think about mean, the... that, that was my nickname in school. Uh, moving on. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> okay, moving... No. moving on, moving on, definitely. <laughs> I was going to make a stupid joke. Okay. I'd be like, hey, uh, Nia, what do you think about the sex labor in Ireland? Like, is it, you know, what's your cultural take on that? Can we just move <laughs> away from the sex workers and the racist taxi drivers, please? People? <laughs> so, yeah. Tom. We need to hear his opinion. Uh, well, I mean, I never had any direct experience. <laughs> you know? Okay, come on. You live in a studio. Come on, come on. Let's I, all I be live honest. in a studio. Doesn't mean I can't afford a, pro- a hooker, you know what I mean? Like the, you the definitely can't means afford you... No, I mean... Uh... I have no well, idea. I mean, the... probably a sex worker hole. Fair enough. <laughs> the Network of Entertaining Asian American Talent Org. Thanks, Nia family... <laughs> we don't know who you are, but we like that you stand sex workers. We're here for this. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Okay, so Tom, you you had a t- you were part of a TV show on RTE. <laughs> we were here about yeah. twenty minutes ago. But, yes. so let's try to get back there. Yeah. Yes, I, yes, I've, I've made a couple of TV shows. Yes, yes. What was that experience like? Fantastic. Um, they paid. 
So that was the number one thing. Do you know what? It is, it's it's a strange place, RT, because it is very much like the civil service in that I, there was one particular uh, moment where we were, make, we were doing a TV show that was quite well funded at the time. And the guy who was my driver, he was telling me his brother had, um, he had the contract over all the deliveries and, and stuff taken in and out in the way of lighting. And, and they, they had rented stuff from RT, this production company. And they went to drop it back at quarter to one, so 12.45. They went to drop back all these lights and these different bits and pieces from set that day. And they were stopped at the, the loading bay and said, what, what are you doing taking those off the truck? He said, well, we, we rented them, so we're dropping them back. And he went, oh, no, 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 no. We'll take them off the truck. Went, oh, cool. So take them off the truck. And he went, we'll take them off the truck. <laughs> and they fucked off. <laughs> to answer your question... As to why people, it's because it's the civil, it's the Teamsters, basically. They just went, no. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that place is- and watched for until 10 past two. And then they slowly took the stuff off and knocked probably an hour or two out of a five minute job. <sighs> wow. Um, Yo. Uh, I, I, now, let's, we already went after the sex workers, the taxi drivers, the rickshaw drivers. Let's go after the unions too. Why not over the only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's happening to this show? Like, I, it's funny because last few times I did it. Very political, isn't it? Already. And yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, our last I, few shows, I was drinking and we were always very organized in our questions and structures. This is the first time I'm drinking tea and this is fucking destroyed. What's happening? What's in this tea? That's my fault. That's my fault, Pedro. I'm sorry. It's, it, uh, it just chaos fucking surrounds me. <laughs> yeah. But but uh, do you enjoy your time? Like you, because you don't do act and do stand up. Which yeah. came first? Which was the first oh, you did? Stand up came first. I'm, I'm still totally bluffing it at the acting. The stand up came first and it was off, off the back of it. It was um, acting came. But yeah, you just, but the great thing about it, and I was, I was talking with uh, a pro, on my own podcast, uh, somebody who was classically trained at acting the other day, and we've both been in the same similar shows. And it's interesting how he put it. He was basically saying, oh, you, you totally fake it as an actor perfectly fine because that's all acting is, it's faking it. But there's two schools of thought. Should you go live a real life, i.e. work in the real world and take those experiences into acting? Or do you go into drama college where they break you the fuck down and then they teach you? It's almost like that moment. Do you remember in The Simpsons when the movies came to town and they were asking the question, oh, why yeah. are you a horse? It's like, well, the horse doesn't look like a horse on TV. you got to paint it. That makes a cow. And they said, what if you want real cows? Well, we tape a bunch of cats together. Because I'm... <laughs> Make, and that's almost what acting is to a certain degree to, to drama coaches or to drama schools is that oh no no real life doesn't look like real life on camera what you need is to know fake life that's the argument ah. but so it, you're a bunch of cats taped together that it would seem so, well no they, i'm booking the trend in that i'm an actually a cow in that oh <laughs> yeah in, you know, i've 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 managed to slip slip in between those gangs of cats that are ta- taped together because i've I've made 12 TV shows. I've been, I say I made, I was in 12 different TV shows and nobody has picked up on it yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. And like, um, you were in a movie as well on the back of one of those TV shows. Yeah. Which movie was it? I've been in a couple of movies. Which one are you talking about? I was going to talk about Damon and Ivor, but what other ones were you in that I missed? I, sure, I, missed I wasn't uh, in that one. I wasn't in that one. Uh, Oh, oh, that's such a good reason. Yeah, we got you. Uh, this is like a tricky question. Our guest actually knows what it's like. You just, like, you just exposed me as a bunch of cats taped together. Oh, fuck oh, yeah. There you go. No, I, yeah, I was in. I was. I started in the TV show, but got burned in the movie. So. Ah, um, uh, no good, buddy. So, do you want to do you want to take that knife out and settle some scores while we're here? No, that's fine. I have several bullets with your name on it, Ali. So that's fine. <laughs> and you know I own guns, so. I know I you own guns. <laughs> I'm, now, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you told me I lived in. You lived in Wicklow, not Tipperary, so I can still go to Tipperary. And now all I do is avoid Wicklow uh, and the International Comedy Club. Uh. And yeah, I, look, I mean, the, the the making of all these things and being on camera and stuff—it's grand and it's fine for a payday, and it's fine in the moment. But realistically, there's nothing compares to 
stage acting or stage performing in the way of stand up. There's just nothing compares because you live giving it your all. Mm-hmm. And especially if you have a, an act, a director who doesn't see what is actually happening organically in front of them. They're just looking at a script and they're going, right, uh, yeah, I don't see it. And you're like, yeah, of course you don't fucking see it because you're not comedy related or you're not whatever related, but you got to do what the boss person says. Yeah. You just do it. But at least when it's on a stage, you can play with that moment a small bit. Like, you know what I mean? Where it's actually a bit more organic. Mm-hmm. But, it's a, yeah. but at the end of the day, when it comes to, um, when it comes to TV and movies, you know their checks have already cleared because they've gotten funding. So <laughs> you can't argue yeah. when it comes to money. So you go, yes, sir. No, sir. Absolutely, sir. Whatever you want. Actually, Whatever I mean, you need, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Like, what was like I, when the first time you start to act, like, especially acting? Like, I mean, because you started to write stand-up comedy. Like, mm. how was that transition for yourself? Like, did you do any class? Or did you just, like, went straight ahead? Because I think you didn't, right? You just went straight ahead and... Yeah, I I I kind of preempted that this is where you needed to go because it it's mm. the story all over the world. If you like, it's all yeah. well and good to be just only known as an amazing stand up comedian, but the reality is that people need to know who you are. And TV at the time was the best thing. Now it is ridiculous, nostalgic internet or internet sketches where they go, "Isn't it funny? Do you all remember what it was like when we were twelve? Mm. Like, oh, <laughs> right? Yeah, you do, but you've got a fucking ear <laughs> man. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, so there is the, the so I knew that that was what was going to have to happen. And I took uh, a friend of mine who was a stand up comedian, he's an American guy living in Cork at the time. And he put me through my paces for about six weeks on an acting course. And it was a case of just, you need to be able to do this shit. You should be able to do the same performance nude in front of a thousand people as you would fully clothed. No shame. And what he did was he was able to tap into a very interesting thing because I played sports all my life. He was able to tap into the fact that I played sports mm-hmm. and he barked. He fucking barked at me. He didn't massage my ego. He didn't tell me I was great. Nothing. He just barked fucking orders at me. And it just kicked in and went, all right. Yeah. And by the time it, it rolled around where I got the, the first kind of big acting job, when at the time and we, we were hitting half a million view, uh, half a million viewers, which we were number one in the country. But that's that's a lot lot around, I didn't do it. That stage. I mean, when you're talking about at the time, 2013, 2012, the country's population was at 4.8 million. It's not bad to be hitting half a million viewers, you know, yeah. on a Monday no. night. And that, not was, at all. and that was that was where it was at. It's amazing. We see, like, actually, yeah. like, I did some, like, when I was a kid, like, teenager, like, you know, acting like theater old stuff, stuff. But that, but the, uh, are you called drama instructor? Is that what you call it? Is that the name you call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the same thing. It was the son of a bitch. Like he was just yelling, but he was yelling at twelve-year-olds <laughs> and fourteen-year-olds. It was just like this mean guy. But sometimes I just think that Jesus Christ, it works. <laughs> like you have a, yeah, an old man it's, yelling it's, at you. Yeah. you I think have we it. have we've gone into a bit of a soft population where we believe that you're supposed to put the arm around everybody. Some people need an arm around them. Some people need a fucking an old hey, good on you. But then a good coach of anything will be able to see what is needed in a kid. And yeah, true. clearly with exactly. me, telling me I'm great is no good to me. I need to be screamed at. And that was, that's the way I've been since I was a child. Like, Do we I need talk- to change the way we're doing the podcast then? Uh- yeah. <laughs> scream, scream <it. laughs> I, put a, I was on, I was on a national radio station yesterday. And we were talking about interesting things from your primary school, from your junior school when you were small. And they were all talking about this, you know, oh, well, I remember back in the day when we'd have milk, you know, or whatever, and it tasted better. <laughs> I just put it, I went, who, who here got beaten in school by the teachers? <laughs> and, and everybody, and there was, there was two women that were much older than me on the, on the interview, and they, and corporal punishment had to be outlawed, but they were both from cities. They had been long outlawed, and I'd been beaten, had the living shit beaten out of me from the age of four to the age of seven. Every time I opened my mouth with a stick, the living shit beaten out of me. And it was interesting in that. No, it didn't. It, the thing is, not that I needed it, but psychologically, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you start to enjoy no, it. Are you sure way. you didn't need it? Have you just exposed your kink on national TV? Or, not, yeah, national, national TV. 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 <laughs> I don't like national TV. <laughs> I get no sense now. The, it's not, the quarantine is not going well for me. <laughs> it's giving me an illusion sometimes because I needed an escort. I was 
Yeah, I was like, yeah. I didn't feel the same pain that your average person would feel. It was like, Grant, hit me with the fucking thing. Bring a bigger fucking stick next time, bitch. <laughs> it just, it did, I, and and it was, it was. I to think about it, it's almost liberating to know that that teacher was able to bring out a fucking stick because words would not have worked on me. Mm-hmm. Fucking detention, fighting <laughs> men in the blackboard would not have worked on me. You need to be able to beat the living fuck out of somebody like me. And thank you, that teacher was. And I, I'm, I'm okay. Great. So and on we that should... whip note, um, yeah, we're go going to bring it. up our musical act again. There you go. We're back in a few minutes. Well, yeah, let's be children. And now, welcome our next host. <laughs> welcome, Start to the Sage. <laughs> All right, uh, that was hilarious, by the way. The song's called Spinach, eh? <laughs> Ain't a kill. The power of a man depends on the manner of will. The evil behind the so many eyes. Now the people shakes your hand with a deadly surprise. Never felt that home in this skin. So I peel back your veil, yeah, and let myself in. Wanna be the rat with all the wise Crippling death of your desire Forget your dream and lay with me Cause I whisper words of the sea I never felt at home in this skin So I peel back your veil, yeah, and let myself in I really enjoyed that, good. man. Yeah. Really enjoyed that. Really like that. Was amazing. I like that. That was great, Saz. Yeah, let's um th- shout out to our buddy David Strush who uh, hooked us up with the wonderful Saz. He saw who the guest was actually. He saw it was Tom and Matt. He was like, Yeah, do you like Stars? They they work together. He's like so David Strush uh, Yeah. Should we have David Strutt playing for us one time? I'd be happy to see him. Yeah, I, I, we should yeah, have yeah. our boy David at him, yeah. Maybe be his band, David and the Shitheads, I think it was called or something. Uh, <laughs> I think so, yeah. You know, sorry. <laughs> sorry, so, sorry, I gotta bring back in Saz. Sorry, uh, Saz is laughing there. It's like, are, aren't you in a band with Saz? Uh, with David? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm in a band with David. Yeah. <laughs> No. I, I, I did directly quote him. Uh, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> but he oh, wasn't absolutely. referring to your band. He wasn't referring to saying. Uh, on a more nice no, note, Joe, Joe Gill is going to give you a shout out. Sorry, sorry for talking over. I, I, I'm an idiot. But your tattoos are ridiculous. <laughs> what are they? Oh, my tattoos? Yeah. We, we'll just highlight them here. That's a raven. Uh, that's a wolf and a bat for our Dracula. That's Leatherface out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, cool. That's the uh, house of a psycho. And the house of mother shit as well. The house of a psycho. So how, how long have you been teaching children? <laughs> <laughs> Funny Welcome enough, back like you said earlier. <laughs> Serious arm in the history of arms. Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> 
<laughs> and welcome back to Talking Tats with <laughs> David and David Shinhead. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Anybody need some tats? No, I'm boring. Boring. I've just I... I've tattooed. I'm actually nude right now. I tattooed an iron jumper onto myself back in the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant Just ink done. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, thanks, Todd. We'll have a chat to you at the end of the show to play this out. Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, oh, and David Stroud did say it's Davy and the Shitheads, so there's confirmation. Davy and the Shitheads. They are Shitheads. Sorry, okay. I don't know why I imagine Davy and the Shitheads would be like kind of like a 60s throwback band, but okay. Oh, they are. Uh, they are. They'll be, yeah. Uh, they're dead. It's a barbershop party. <laughs> well, uh, what kind of music are you into, uh, Tom and the gang? Why not? We'll start with Tom. Let's go around the room and talk shit about music now since we're here. I really like what Stars was singing. I, I suppose it's kind of it's almost it's almost jailhouse, isn't it? I, I like that. Mm. There's a it's there's fucking singing about something and not being a soppy cunt. You know what I mean? The amount of soppy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Oh my god! Not being a so- can we have that as the tagline of the episode? Can we have that as like a so god fucking absolute fucking watery humans that you couldn't fucking hang a coat on singing shit that I don't give a fuck about? You know what I mean? Tell me about that time you lost your arm. You know what I mean? Tell me about that time you fucking somebody <laughs> fucking stole your and how you can still play the guitar at the same shit. time. I, I, uh, I, I, if it isn't music you can't hang your hat on I just can't this watery piss and these fucking paper thin fucking humans singing watery piss I just can't fucking hack it so it's a small bit of life to it that maybe sounds like the person has a fucking scar you know what I mean if you listen to it on fucking Spotify or on the radio you go that, that fucker that woman that man they have a fucking scar somewhere you know what yeah. I mean that's I what I want to do Anything I, fucking watery piss. No, thanks. You're grand. You're fine. <laughs> I, I feel like this is like a common trait amongst comedians. Uh, like I literally have written down, it's weird. I know you're a comedic actor, but like acting requires sincerity. We're comedians. We all just want to get to the point, if you know what I mean. You know, <laughs> or like we have, we have a low tolerance for bullshit. Yeah, I think so. Because I, especially when, I mean, when you self-edit, continuously through life you must self-edit and you continuously have to be self-deprecating to a point where you go that was fucking stupid that shit was fucking stupid stop fucking doing that i mean we should be actually more successful in life if you think about just like (laughs) 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 Uh, yeah i was gonna say you have a low tolerance for bullshit yet we're still doing this on a sunday night uh yeah. <laughs> Quarantine is definitely raising our uh, our standard of bullshit ability at the moment, unfortunately. <laughs> at least it gives us an excuse for actually fucking being involved in bullshit. Typically, people go, why would you be involved in such a level of bullshit? Oh, well, but everybody now has to be involved because we're all stuck at home. Yeah. 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 That's, That's why we all here. <laughs> So yeah, so what like so that must be interesting though when you're acting though trying to figure out like make yourself be sincere and shit and all have emotions and bullshit. I don't know. Uh, you probably be able to take have emotions and yeah. bullshit. This is like a teenage <laughs> podcast. You know, emotions and bullshit and the what? Oh, oh I hate that. God, they don't understand yeah. me. Uh, gosh, I'm so sad. Sorry, sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> Oh, uh, ironically, oh. the one with us to, who you would expect to have the least, you know, tolerance for the bullshit is, is the one that's doing all the acting and being in yeah. touch with his feelings and shit. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, I don't think, I don't think emotions are fucking, they're fucking necessary. You know what I mean? Like, I do think people downplay. Um, these days, we're not allowed to be angry. Do you know that kind of? Yeah. I definitely lost everybody. Yeah, we're uh, back. Oh, Tom's back. Yeah, you're back. You're back. You're back. I mean, can you hear? Oh, you? I'll yeah. just talk for a sec. Uh, oh yeah. Anyways, yeah. Like I find that as a trans woman, like uh, everyone expects me you to are be all extra. Uh, uh, well, we're still talking. I think. Oh, we're back. We're, we're back. still we're good. Back. Hey. Yeah. Back. I, I was saying as a as a trans woman, everyone kind of uh, expects me to be 
like telling an emotional story all the fucking time, which is really fucking annoying. So I like, I, I, I'm kind of a bit like you. I said I'd only fucking make stuff that's either fucking funny or angry. They're my two modes, to be honest. Like, and <laughs> it's debatable. Yeah, it's debatable are- about the first part. Sorry, you're Irish, so you don't really have any other gear. Most people <laughs> like it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. You have you fuckers wear your all your emotions on your sleeves because you're soulless bastards. <laughs> I don't I, I, Vietnamese look uh, whatever. But we have two well, I mean, years we, when it comes to it. it's fucking happy or angry. That's it. Well, I mean, when you uh, and when no you one's really through, sure like, about the happy part. Yeah, I mean, when you go through like thirty years of war, you, you gotta keep. Oh, there you go. Fucking happy motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> you won the war. What else do you want? Uh, <laughs> looking at the bright side of things. Fuck you. You no, go put a smile on your face sad. like me. I'm going to refresh uh, this just in case because this is going to be dead on me one second. Yeah. No, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say I was gonna tell you to go to the corner, but I don't know if your studio has a corner. Does it have a corner? Sorry, that was. Um, it's over there. <laughs> There's a corner. Okay, cool. It's of course. Yeah, I was saying not nothing uh, puts a smile on your face quite like napalm. Apparently. Uh... <laughs> oh. Oh. Explosive. What is happening oh, in this episode? I, I don't know. This is me getting cancelled, so it is. This is what this podcast is, and uh, Tom is back here. Hey, Tom, how are you? Oh, you shifted. Hey. That's disconcerting. So, uh, yeah, welcome back to the For some reason, day. Yeah, it happened. We could still hear you, but uh, you couldn't necessarily hear us. So it was kind of funny because you were just like coming in. It's like, oh, I'm going to refresh the page. Or you just turned into our granddad for a second there. Hmm. Oh, oh, wow. Sorry, I hit a nerve there, apparently. Uh, <laughs> it's just staring at me, drinking a pint, glaringly. Okay, moving on. Well, uh, it, 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 no, genuinely, I didn't need to stare so glor- gloweringly at you, but it just froze again, so it was like, oh, right, I'll take a fucking drink. <laughs> uh, I, I, lo- I love how... I, I don't know about you guys, but I always thought I was good at technology, but this quarantine has just made me realize I really am not good with technology. Yeah, I feel that as well, yeah. Uh, I tried yeah, yeah. streaming yesterday, and there was loads of stuff, and even today. So, yeah, like, it's there's a lot of stuff to learn about this. Yeah, I, like, I've always looked, like, down, like, oh, this is such an easy thing to do. It's, it's complicated. Sorry, Nia, yeah. you were saying something. I think I interrupted you. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, I, I had online. I had online lecture. Sorry, uh, I had online lectures, and a lot, and both times um, they have been like disastrous. Yeah, it's yeah. Weird. like I did a whole degree through, like, well, by it was like a one-year degree. So on the internet, oh, they... so it doesn't seem like it's real. Uh, but I did a whole, a whole online degree. It was really weird. But uh, but that was an online, online degree in fucking crochet. What can you do with an online user... degree? In? <laughs> user interface and user experience design, um, which uh, uh, sounds like some crime. Yeah. That's a yeah. It sounds like it's so much fun. Uh, it's it's oh. basically web design. So if anything, if there's any degree that should be online, it should be web design. Let's be fair. Fair. But I have a question. Yeah. How do they how do they do the beating with online education? I mean, how do you? Do they just bully you? They just bully you? They send the Brazilian guy around with a tuk tuk and he beats the living fuck out of you with a prostitute in the back that Ali has like a horn to bring. I was going shock collar but okay uh i guess that kind of ties in with the prostitute i don't know what I'm, oh god uh it's called a callback Ellie, for fuck's sake come on i can't commit to callbacks okay otherwise i have to dox my dead name okay <laughs> oh shit yeah yes you're right that no yeah, I, I only oh, learned what that phrase you just said just now i only learned what that meant two days ago i what docs or dead names? Both. That that sentence you just said was fairly <laughs> explained. Welcome to the internet, oh, my friend. Uh, I said, hey, lads, I'm going to have to. I'd murder a fucking pint when they if they landed in Ireland for the first time and they heard that phrase. Yeah, boys. First time you landed in Ireland, somebody said, "Would you murder a pint?" Did that make sense? Uh. Oh, that's a yeah. good question, actually. I th- Clearly not. 
<laughs> I'm trying to think about what the more point. I think I guess I would because people maybe use that expression for food as well, don't they? Like I'd kill. Uh, no, no, I don't know if you would. There's I, I already for has been here for almost four years, but I'm there are loads of expressions and things people used to say. That I had no fucking clue what they're on about. Like even what's the story? I was like, what do you mean? What story? What? I, like like I'll be, be like, hey, what's up? That's a Dublin thing. That's a stupid fucking thing to say. To say to <laughs> yeah. I, I feel oh. like you understood as a Portuguese man though you probably understood what your man means or you thought you did uh, oh, no. I don't know I remember that was something a like when I, joke let's move on uh, no, I was just going to say something like my first job in Dublin like uh, one thing because you know the word grand I learned it in British English so I felt like grand is something amazing right so I started the, the job and everybody's saying don't worry you'll be grand and I thought oh my god these people are so positive about me being so good at my job and then i realized that grand just means you're going to be all right or you, you know you're not going to be like you're going to be a little bit better than shit uh Man. so that was yeah yes, yeah yeah <laughs> have you got how long have you been here man um well i've been here like um uh, seven months now i guess uh, seven eight months so wow, was irish that long? have you picked up an irishisms like like grand yeah, yeah, uh, like uh, that's grand. Um, going, I will go to the Jacks or you know, Mario Pike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever used oh, yeah. the word uh, murder. Uh, I don't think you need any more. Quit your fucking master's course. You don't need any more in international history. You know everything now. <laughs> <laughs> it's grand. I'm, I would murder a pint. I gotta hit the Jacks. Yeah. I can hit you. And what? also, um, uh, ride as well. Uh, I find like the way we use. <laughs> I guess you would ride. Go for a ride, you know. I'll ride. Although uh, you don't, <laughs> you get, you get the ride. You don't go for a ride. You get ride. <laughs> you, get ride. You, get you don't go for you a ride. ride. This is an American TV show. <laughs> Trust me, they're two very different things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on on that note, guys, I actually we've actually come to the end of our show. <laughs> that Holy was a quick hour. Already. That was quick. Uh, Time flies yeah, when you're having fun, boys. Uh, yeah. yeah. We talked <laughs> guys, a lot. Thanks very much for joining us. Comedy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna say bye to the lads for now, um, and I'm gonna bring up back the wonderful, the wonderful. Stars, and if you enjoy the show, guys, it's just me here for now. A sec, guys, if you enjoyed the show, thanks for coming along. Um, like and subscribe, all that bullshit. You know the crack. Uh, you can find us all on social media. Find stars, the wonderful stars is going to play us out. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, to all the guests for joining us. Welcome, stars. Hey, thanks, Ali and Pedro, for having me. Uh, this song's called Rock Up Wine.